Experience. I am your extremely horse host, Martin Wagner. Uh, joining me uh, here on the air as my co-host is Amanda, uh, the wife of our regular host, Jeff D., who is out of town for this weekend and the next. So thanks for coming on the air today. You're very welcome. Amanda, our guest today is Mr. Howard Thompson. Thank you, Martin. And um, just uh, quickly with our opening announcements, and then we'll get into the show proper. This program is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin. We are a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. Uh, the ACA has weekly meetings. Um, we actually have a couple of now. We have, uh, of course, our traditional Sunday morning meeting, which takes place about 10.30 a.m. at uh, the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop. That's at uh, 307 West 5th Street. Uh, that's uh, downtown on 5th Street between Guadalupe and La Vaca. And uh, we also have, uh, well, that happens every Sunday except for the first Sunday of each month. Uh, when we have sort of our brunch and lecture series, which takes place at the first cafeteria at North Cross Mall. Um, the next uh, one of those uh, will take place on April the 1st. However, I don't think we have a speaker slated for that day. I believe we are. that's going to be our day for nominating new board, yes. of, board members and new yes. uh, officers for the ACA and that sort that's of right. thing. So uh, probably not of much interest if you are not an ACA member, but uh, or those are open to the general public. And our bagel shop meeting is open to all atheists and agnostics and unbelievers, atheist-friendly persons uh, out there. So if you are a closeted atheist, which uh, I can understand you might be, and uh, don't really think that there is anyone out there to talk to or relate to in our very uh, strongly entrenched religious culture, well, come on out and uh, meet some unbelievers. It's a lot of fun, fun group. Uh, we have another little social gathering mm -hmm. that has started up, which is a midweek thing now. Um, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., we have started up a, a happy hour. Uh, this is at Waterloo Ice House, not the Waterloo Brewing Company. It's Waterloo Ice House, not uh, to confuse the two. And this is up in North Austin on Burnett Road. It's on Burnett, sort of between Steck and 183 Research. So um, that has been a, a good little new meeting to uh, to be involved in because it's it's been a, it's it's been an opportunity for people who can't or don't want to get up Sunday mornings and come to the bagel shop. <laughs> mm -hmm. we've, we've gotten some people uh, able to come in uh, and, and meet us. So, uh, so that's a lot of fun. The Godless Gamers meet Monday nights at 7 p.m. That's uh, Jeff D's baby, and if I don't mention it on the air, he will knee me in the groin, so I have to mention <laughs> it. Uh, that is happening, uh, I said it happens every week, uh, and it is hosted uh, by Wendy Britton right now, who is uh, making her lovely house available to us. However... After this coming Monday, we aren't going to have a venue, so we need a new place that can host uh, half a dozen or so um, uh, gamers. Uh, we put board games. It's just a social event, a lot of fun. And so if we, uh, starting next week, we're going to need a new locale to, to play our games at. So if any, any ACA member knows, uh, please either corral Jeff or call the voicemail or something like that if you're willing to volunteer some space for that. Uh, let's see. So, well, that's uh, basic announcements, I think. Um, Amanda, Howard, yeah. welcome to the show. It's good to be good live, to be good to be on. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to uh, bring up, Amanda, here at the beginning of that? Oh, I'd like to hear Howard first. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what would you? Uh, what have you got for us today, Howard? Okay. Uh, now, just to set it up, yes. you are one of our more politically active members. Uh, yes. And yes. you have uh, been very instrumental in getting our group out there to fight the good fight for non-theistic uh, rights. Uh, yes. So, um... And what you have to talk today has a little to do, doesn't it, with the Bush charitable choice agenda, which is going down like the Hindenburg right now? Uh, well, I'm not quite sure it will go down like the Hindenburg, but uh, it may be resurrected. Uh. But, uh, yeah, the uh, for those who don't know, uh, I am the secretary of the Atheist Community of Austin. Uh, and last week uh, we decided that our group should get involved in some of the uh, church-state separation issues that are going on. Uh, in particular, uh, the faith-based charitable choice kind of things that Bush brought to Texas and also brought out nationally. And what the uh, 
Atheist Community of Austin Board of Directors authorized was a letter for us to send to both the White House Office of Faith-Based, Faith-Based and Community Initiatives and the Texas Governor's Office requesting policy and eligibility information for the Atheist Community of Austin to participate in federal programs and get funds for atheist in atheist context social services. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Charitable Choice, it's a program whereby the government is trying to funnel money to church organizations and religious organizations uh, who will deliver social services, which are part of regular federal kinds of programs, but give them in a context which can still have religious messages or prayers, or in the case of one aspect of the program that's been mentioned at the Washington level, uh, actually fund programs which are intended to convert people uh, to uh, some other religious faith on a voucher system. Although they swear that's not what the money's for. Uh, well, they swore that wasn't what the money for is for, but I think they've got this as a sort of a voluntary thing. If somebody gets a voucher, then they can go get proselytized. Uh, and while atheists are uh, very strongly of the opinion that our Constitution uh, gives no authority whatsoever to any level of government to do anything religious, uh, we feel like that if atheists don't get involved in these sorts of programs, where federal funding is being handed out, then atheism is a disadvantage and uh, we lose out. Of course, we don't know what kind of response we'll get, but uh, at least we would hope that the uh, White House office and Governor Rick Perry's uh, office will give us an answer that says uh, atheist groups are or are not, are not eligible, and if they may be eligible, uh, what the information and criteria are for participation. So, you know, Hang on to your hats and uh, you know, contain your enthusiasm. You know, if this sort of thing goes, you know, you might have, oh, for example, an atheist charter high school in Austin, Texas. Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, or you might have uh, atheist uh, soup and reason kitchens around, around town. Soup and reason. Uh, or you might have uh, prison uh, literacy programs and uh, oh, that sort goodness. of things that. Uh, we might actually think about getting involved with. No, but, but it's an, an important point to reiterate yes. is that um, one of the common misconceptions of atheism that we yeah. always like to, to try to clear up, of course, is that atheism is not a faith-based position. Right. We're not a faith. Right. We're not a religious right. faith. Okay. By definition, atheism right. is the rejection of religious yes. faith. So your impetus to do this is more or less what? Just to sort of see what the response will be, to see exactly... Um, or just see look on their face when an atheist group well uh, the door. you know while we are not uh, while mm. we're not a faith based uh, sort of uh, worldview I guess is a way of thinking about yeah. it or belief system uh, atheism is a way of looking at the world and is a uh, belief system in a sense because we accept reality uh, and there is a uh, past court precedence uh, at the Supreme Court level in particular uh -huh. which uh, regards uh, non-religious groups and non-theistic groups who do have uh, maybe not a doctrine or a dogma, but at least kind of an organized uh, way of looking at the world uh -huh. as uh, being uh, of a legal status to be uh, treated equally to religions. Like if government does something for a religion, then they can't exclude the humanists and the ethical culturalists and, okay. the, and right. the skeptics and the atheists. If right. they do something to bar uh, religious groups, then they would also bar us from uh, that sort of participation. So uh, we're going at the equity issue, not the issue of the fact that the whole damn thing is unconstitutional. <laughs> right. Which, of course, it is. But Which, of course, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, what is fascinating, though, is the way in which uh, all of the religious right seems yes. to be tripping over itself to jump ship on this. Uh, it's, it's as if all at once they are suddenly realizing why we have separation of church and state in the first place. And they're, they're concerned that if they start accepting government funds, yes. taxpayer money, then that could suddenly come with some strings attached, particularly government control of their activities, as opposed yeah. to the other way around, which is what they. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's for. that they're worried about government involvement in their church. I think it's they're worried about a much more small-minded issue of I don't want my tax dollars going to Church of Islam mm. charities. I don't want my tax dollars going to the Jewish community centers, and. I'm glad that this thing is coming into yeah. the news because one of the things I object to with a lot of faith-based charities 
is something that amounts to coercion. I know that with the Salvation Army, you must attend church services or you don't get your Uh breakfast, you don't get your soup. Give us this day our daily bread doesn't let you into the soup kitchen until after you've been prayed at, prayed with, and until you have prayed yourself. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is a concern. I find I mean, that's, that... That's known to be sort of de rigueur for how these yeah. organizations act. I mean, why are they called faith-based organizations? Because they're faith-based. You know, if they didn't involve some degree of proselytizing, and if, if, if the religion itself was not at the core of their charitable mission, then they wouldn't be called. A faith-based. They'd be a secular charity. Well, there's a it wouldn't even be called faith-based. Yeah. Well, there's another um, uh, weakness in their position that I think needs to be brought out, and that is this whole concept that faith is something special and works, and that's what they're mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. Uh, that there's an all-powerful God, and if you have faith in God, this supernatural being who can do anything, can fix anything that's broke, cure any illness, faith um, compels you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One way, one, way the, one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. that's, that's this uh, magical sort of power operating in the material world. Yet, yeah. here all these people are saying, wait a minute, our faith is broken, can't operate without money. We need a government welfare program in order to make faith work, which I think is just completely undercuts the whole idea of what faith is supposed to be anyway. Which, yeah. you know, if faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains, then why do you need billions in federal handouts? Yeah. <laughs> Add a little detail. That's uh, you know, it's one of those little questions that annoys them. Let me bring it up, folks. I'm sorry about my throat. My goodness, I just don't. It amazes me how long it takes to kind of recover from these kinds of yes. things. I was sick on Tuesday. You know, that was when I had my really hard day of the headache. So the, you should be really house. contagious about now. And mm, yeah, I guess we so. can expect so, to enjoy this, Howard. I'm just typhoid Mary. Yeah, I'm a bit of a <laughs> Typhoid uh, Martin. <clears throat> so hopefully you can enjoy my voice. So. I think it makes me sound gruff and manly. That's all. <laughs> I'm McGru- McGruff. McGruff, the, the atheist dog. That's it. <laughs> Take a bite out of religion. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Well, Amanda, do you have any news for us before we get to, um, into the phone calls? We uh, This is a live call-in show, folks. Um, we're here. The purpose of this program is essentially twofold. We're here to explain the atheist position on various topics, not just on religious belief itself, but as uh, you know, uh, how Howard's been yeah. discussing various political and social issues. And we're here as, uh, so we're here to uh, clear that up and uh, clear up any misconceptions. Uh, religion, uh, the Christian community has a great deal of misunderstanding <clears throat> about what atheists are and what atheism is and what, who atheists are. And we're here to clear that up. And we're also here to serve as an outreach to, uh, like I said, closeted unbelievers, people who may have felt that there wasn't an avenue for them. So that's what the point of the show is. And we are a live call-in show. And uh, Russell will put that number, or Russell or Virginia will put that number up uh, on the air in a few minutes, in about five minutes, but we're going to go ahead and get our preliminaries out of the way. And what do you have for us, Amanda? Well, uh, last time I was on the show, some time back, it occurred to me that there were a lot of calls on the Ten Commandments, and hmm. we didn't have anything as the atheists to offer. In the absence of knowledge, we tend to assume the worst, and not hmm. knowing what we stand for, I can understand a little bit where people are coming from when they think things like what they were told, that atheists have no morality. We are a community. We we live with each other. We talk to each other. We have a lot of friendships. And whether it's meeting people at the bagel shop or talking to somebody who's very shy about their atheism, corresponding exclusively through email, you know, we do have a culture going. We are a movement. We're a very old movement, and we have a lot of tradition. It goes back to the Greeks of the Golden Age, goes on through the Freethinker movement brought to Austin, Texas, and all the cities around this area between the two rivers through the land grants that was brought here by the Germans. Mm -hmm. And up to today, the Freethinker traditions still stand here. And I thought that I'd like to talk a little bit about what ideas that they had brought. And one of the divergences that I see between our community and many other cultures, something I can contrast, this is not a rule, this is not what we all believe, this is sort of a generalized how we're kind of different, is that we don't have a list of 10 easy rules for everyone to follow. We tend to be run on what we call principles. Mm -hmm. A rule is something you're supposed to obey all the time, no exceptions, and if you break it, you get punished. But a principle is something that you're supposed to follow as an idea, not a command. It doesn't tell you what to do in a specific situation. It offers a way to think about what to do. And whereas rules are never supposed to be broken, principles can be broken in good conscience 
for the sake of a principle that's more important at that time. And this is moral relativism, a phrase that's become a dirty word amongst those who either don't really understand what it means or those who would much rather see you forced to obey their favorite set of rules. But moral relativism is something that we actually tend to do pretty naturally all the time anyways. Um, the principles that we generally follow aren't too strange. Things like life is valuable, from which we get don't hurt another thinking being, don't hurt yourself. Another principle we've got is respect the rights of others. That's why we're making such a big to-do about mm -hmm. faith-based spending by the government. Exactly. Don't steal, don't lie, don't tolerate inaccurate information. Share skills and knowledge with those who are responsible. I translated these from German, from a freethinker document of what they wanted their children to follow, rather than the Ten Commandments, in their school texts. And that's not too, not too far off from the things that other groups follow. But this idea of moral relativism is a very key idea, because it's very hard to follow a rule all the time, and without the concept of sins, our idea of when it's not right to follow a rule is when it didn't make sense, mm. when there was something more important. There's no rule so perfect that you should follow it all the time. Take any rule, no matter how important, you can find a reason where it would be downright evil to well, follow it. You know, you can you can you can set up, of course, there are the the obvious circumstances that happen when when, for example, uh, nations are at war. Well, yeah. <laughs> laws against murder tend to go out the window because the whole point of war is to is to pepper guys full of holes with machine guns, and um, so there there are circumstances in which you can find yourself in situations where the prevailing way to do things, you know, the the prevailing rules don't really seem to apply to that situation. It doesn't. You don't find yourself in those sorts of situations all the time, but there can be circumstances that arise in which you have to make difficult choices, and you make those choices by looking at what the options are and what the consequences of each option would be. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the Freethinker Monument is a monument mm -hmm. to those Texans from Germany who refused to join the effort to fight the North in the U.S. Civil War, mm -hmm. and they decided that when there was a war, they didn't think it was right to kill, not even in self-defense. Right. That was their choice. That's what that whole monument is about. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's about that. It's not really a monument to atheism. And the monument we're talking you know? about is the Fighting Karak, the Freethinker Rock, which has yeah. been, yes. which has been kidnapped. Yes, Tell us a kidnapped. little bit about that. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. uh, Amanda's making reference to uh, an attempt to get a Texas historical marker uh, to honor the German Freethinkers, the Freethinkers who settled uh, in the hill country northwest of San Antonio uh, from the eighteen late eighteen forties on. Uh, and uh, we had a 32-ton rock uh, in place in the town park, uh, and uh, all everybody had approved this, the uh, Chamber of Commerce locally, the local historical commissions, and that sort of stuff. And then they found out that atheists thought this was a good idea and had put up some money for it, so it immediately became Satan's rock. So uh, <laughs> taking a two-year uh, head start on uh, Afghanistan's Taliban, they uh, eventually <laughs> hauled the rock from the park so that mm -hmm. they could destroy uh, the symbols of any opposing uh, belief system. Yeah, well, they found out what Freethinker meant. I yes. Think, of the, yes. The stink uh, about that. Yes, and, and they certainly don't want to admit that any of their uh, grandparents might have been yeah. <laughs> Freethinkers. <laughs> that would be a, a good rule. <laughs> we have a caller, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take mm -hmm. his call and then get back to uh, other... Uh, what, what other belief might, systems. Yeah, what you might yeah. have, Amanda, and, and I have a few other things. So let's see. Let's talk to Joe. Hello, yeah, Hello hi, Joe. Sir. How are you? How are you doing today? Good. Um, I was uh, watching your show last week, and I noticed that um, that you guys um, don't seem to just not uh, basically you're not just people who don't believe in God. It's that you you just uh, don't like Christians, the Bible, or ultimately Christ. No, that's well, that's that's a common misconception. And um, well, first off, because we're not religious. Um, yeah, I mean, it would make sense that we don't like. The, the structure or the the um, I guess the the hierarchy and the organization yep. and the the uh, the um, the corporate the incorporated uh, aspects of, of established religions we do kind of tend to find those distasteful but um, it, it's not true that we uh, single Christians out um, for for abuse and in fact we don't we I don't like to think that we take 
an abusive <clears throat> approach at all towards uh, Christians or any other religion. We just want to be able to uh, have have our views expressed and to offer uh, a forum for people who might agree with our views to to have a, a community that they can be part of and uh, not feel intimidated. Um, but in, uh, in the society we live in, nobody would um, deny you the right of of um, denying uh, God's existence. Uh, well, you know, and I can understand your frustration with uh, modern religious, uh, you know, religious forms of, of Christianity. You know, there's there's a variety of different ones. They bicker amongst themselves. I mean, that's just basically how Satan keeps everybody from uh, getting together as, as one. Yeah, we don't believe in him either. <laughs> Do you think well, that, that's a good that's a good point? Because you can't believe in him if you don't believe in God. So you don't believe in in say you don't believe in any type of black magic, anything that that, that goes to that that uh, that evil side. If if there were ever um, you know, well, we certainly believe in human evil. Yeah. Um, we think that that is a a byproduct of psychology and and a, a person's behavioral development. Um, and you know, so there are just some people out there who aren't right in the head chemically or for whatever reason. Um, but it's but I would I would disagree with your basic assertion that there's no one out there who would deny us the right to express our uh, lack of religious belief. Um, I, would I think uh, I think that a, a a a a good example of this it was a controversial situation that happened last year that uh, resulted in a Supreme Court decision involving what were allegedly student led, although of course it was machinated by the school administration, student-led prayers at football games. And part of the reason why this was determined um, not simply to be you know, a free speech issue, but a religious coercion issue, was that uh, someone, I, I believe it was Justice Souter on the Supreme Court, pointed out that it's highly unlikely any student at that football game would have been allowed to get behind the very same mic uh, at which uh, one of the girls, uh, the, the girl who was the band member who was leading the Christian prayer, mm -hmm. no student would have been allowed to get up at that mic and say, Christianity is a load of caca, you know, or, or nonsense, and, and it's not true. So I but, think... I mean, the merit society does that all the time through through through, uh, through the mainstream media. I mean, with uh, sex and violence and, you know, who cares about God kind of things, and, you know, morality doesn't mean a thing, you know. Well, like I that. don't know. I mean, I don't know who is expressing the idea that morality doesn't mean a thing. It's certainly not us. Um, there are certain... There's a great deal of... Uh, I, I, I would agree that there's a great deal in mass media that is distasteful or immoral, I don't think that you can lay that at the feet of atheists. I think you can lay that at the feet of the corporate interests uh, who are out there to uh, just make an easy buck by pandering to uh, audience titillation. Sure. You know, well, I, it's I the mean, same people who so, report I mean, the, the news that, that give us the uh, the entertainment. <laughs> so what well, right. But, you know, but there's, but there's, of course, there's there's chocks, uh, loads and loads of sex and violence in the Bible. So, but, I mean, it's like sex and violence that, that, is an aspect of life. It's everywhere. Um, that that I think is just a it's a money issue more than a than a morality or a lack of issue. Or I mean, it could be amoral on the part well, of well, well money, money does that is the ultimate motivator, isn't it? But um, oh. but I wanted to make another comment about um the fact that um you know that uh, if if you're not following if you if, if you are free thinkers then you wouldn't um, necessarily agree with everything that Darwin says. And so, oh, to me, definitely Darwin, not. Yeah, Darwin was a hundred years ago. We don't we don't follow mathematics or chemistry as it was a hundred years ago. Right. Darwin was one of the first, and yeah. I don't know any scientist who works with this stuff who would take Darwin as gospel. Yeah, right. And, and good, uh, good. Quite, a lot, quite a lot has been going. Yeah, I mean, for for example, remember, around 100, 150 years ago, actually, yeah. you know, back when he wrote Origin of Species, they had not discovered genes yet. There was. They hadn't even discovered vitamins. I mean, there were there was a great deal of discovery to to uh, yet to be made. Um, right, but, but we're he, not, was, we're he not... was the one who pretty much set the uh, the basis for our public school system teaching um, evolution opposed to creation. I mean, neither one of those are proven facts. Right. Well, well, that's where you're wrong. Yeah, when I, you I, say proven, uh -huh. I have to say that there's more proof and less proof, better proof and yeah. worse proof, and in in the, creation over evolution, I agree. Yeah, I don't think saying? that. I don't think more proof in yeah. creation than there would be. In no, evolution. no, <laughs> not, not unless you're no, no, there isn't. Uh, yeah. the, the, I, it, it surely makes more logical sense. No, yeah, and, really. and there's a big investment that, that everything on, we prove that 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 everything that got here. It makes more sense, sense that everything got here by a big invisible man saying 
stuff up here now, we're magically snapping his fingers? Sure, that makes a lot more sense than just um, mm -hmm. all the creation, I mean, all the design um, and order that there is in life and everything that has to do with life on this planet. Okay, it tell me something. It makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. to say that, yes, the creator with design and order created everything than to just say, yeah. uh, well, it just kind of happened. Well, that's and then we'll just teach our children in but, the public school but Joe, Joe, that Joe, this is what goes on. Joe, Joe, that evolution does not say everything just happened. You oh. see, the thing is, your education in the sciences is lacking here. Everything that you think you know about evolution is based upon complete misinformation that I assume you've gotten from your religious leaders. Okay, now and tell me tell me where in the fossil record is the transitional form. Okay. <laughs> Joe, you are a transitional form. I am a transitional yes. form. Every life form that exists is a transition from one development developmental level of the species to the next. No, okay. the transitional form would be okay. the, part, the the creature. Okay, like, Joe. For Joe, example, what you... the fish with the legs. That would well, be the well, let me let me address form. this. Well, let me stop, address this. Uh, we have a, we don't we don't have the same old tired. Yeah. There is no such thing as creation. There are many many points of view on this to take into account, <coughs> yeah. specifically on the idea of transitional forms. What we now know about genetics that Darwin had no clue and really puzzled over was things like control genes. Control genes let us put creatures together, taking old motifs like arms and legs and moving them around. One of the things that Darwin postulated was that roses and apples and strawberries are all related. Uh -huh. And you look at a strawberry, the seeds are on the outside. You look at an apple, the seeds are on the inside. There is no transitional form of a seed halfway between the inside yeah. and the outside. Right. This so, is a control so would, gene so mechanism. Would make you believe that creation, that God created the apple tree, no. And he created the... <laughs> well, that's, the that's one conclusion. <laughs> Purpose. That's one possible conclusion. But you'd also have to explain... Why doesn't something like the Bible tell us in detail about how many galaxies there are out there and as a as a description of reality, how accurate is it? Well, I look I'll at an astronomy I, I, text pretty, and I say... Simple. That's pretty simple. It would probably be for the same reason that most people think the book's too big to read in the first place, so how much more detailed information could you fit in there to make it even bigger where people surely wouldn't read it? Wait a minute, I think you know? God could have invented <laughs> if, if, compact discs way back yeah, when, if, had if, he wanted to, you know, if there and, were a God and, creation. And also, the bottom line is it's based on Based on faith, and he gives, you know, and he gives us. Right, whereas enough. evolutionary biology Evolution is, based is on not evidence. based on faith. Well, it's not based on evidence. Yeah, it's a working theory. You know, sir, it if could you be had wrong. ever taken a biology class in your life, you would know it would. Oh. The reason creationism is not taught in public schools is for one reason and one reason only. It is false. And good teachers understand why it's false. You know, creationism, uh. as you stated, is not creation science, it's just creation religion. Is no, I think, I think evolution is the same way. I mean, give well, sir, not. You, yeah, well, just, all you, you have to do is there's a lot more to it. There is no transitional form. Which, no, yeah, no, no, there are lots of transitional forms. There are lots of transitional forms, and there are there are lots of transitional forms, and there are control me, genes, both. Yeah, uh, right, which, Joe, what is I, a transitional form? I just gave you are a transitional form. That is so weak. That is so weak. Why is it weak? You would use that in in a public school system classroom and say that that is that's what you have. Are you a little different from your parents? Huh? Are you a little different have, from your parents? Have, have, have we given the culture of ignorance enough time here? Should we yeah, I think. <laughs> Joe, well, I want to hear this out. Joe, Are yeah. you different from your parents? Do you exactly look like your father? So, uh, so like deers. Joe, uh, answer. Cows. Please answer. Please answer my question. Answer the question. Just Do answer. You? Are you just like your parents, or are you a little different? No, God created us all individual. Uh, I see. Where's the transitional form between you and your parents? You're postulating that there has to be something in between, and no, at the we, same we, time we, saying no, that there doesn't both, need to be. We're both identical. That's right. We both have two legs, two arms, one head. You some children are born. Beings. Some children that's are born right. with three legs. Some yeah. children are born with five legs. So that's Those children. That's not a transitional. If form. their children yeah. have five legs, Joe. that's a transitional oh, okay. form, okay. and that so does happen. That yeah. Deformed Joe. creatures. So okay. here's the thing. Um, You're, you, what you want to define uh, as a transitional form is simply based on misinformation. Yeah. Well, Your it's whole based on Darwin. No, um, Joe. Darwin's no, it's theory. not. It's Your not based on Darwin. Darwin okay. was the one who said, you know, we have these fossil records, and based on the fossil records, we can see how man came from a, 
from a single cell creature to a fish, and then the fish jumped well, on land. And Darwin didn't say that. No, Joe, that's, that's, that's false. Darwin, Darwin didn't that's say that. Joe, you know that. You Darwin didn't say that. The public school. Did, Darwin right? didn't say no, that, Joe. If, you if your that school said that, school, your teacher was an idiot. Okay. Yeah. Pure and well, simple. Okay. So like, they didn't that teach you that when you were in That is a complete. I mean, when you were in middle school. All right, so, Joe, here's how it works. We take a turn, you take a turn. If we're going to do okay. this talking over each other, okay. we're going to have to let you go. But here's, here's the bottom line. Okay, first off, none of us are evolutionary biologists. If you want to know really what, what evolutionary science does have to say about things like transitional forms, why don't you do what we do? Go and look at what the experts have to say. There's an excellent website called talkorigins.org, which publishes a great deal of papers uh, on this specific subject. The problem that we're hearing from you is that what you think and what you have told us you think evolutionary biology has to say is just not what it has to say, okay? You've been fed wrong ideas about what evolution is all about. That's why you have this confusion about transitional forms. You know, transitional forms are not like a fish with legs and a monkey with wings and a seahorse, you know, with, uh, you know, wheels. That's just not, that isn't how, that isn't how life forms evolve and develop. But okay. the information that I was fed was from the public school system. Well, then you had a lousy, crummy teacher. No, okay. it was multiple. It wasn't just one teacher. Well, then you had a yeah. series of stupid you, teachers. You can't hold okay. us responsible for what the school system has yeah. taught you. I mean, Unfortunately, hey, look, our school I'll agree, system look, I'll agree has with problems. You that our school system has a lot of problems and needs a lot of straightening out. All right. But right. anyway, but the fact of the matter is you've been given a great deal of information about what you think evolution has Let, to say. Let's put it this way. Well, it, Let's put, let me let me rephrase it. it. The confusion came from the school books that are currently used in the public school system. That's right, and we need we have rotten school books, and we need to get good ones written by good scientists. Anyway, we appreciate your call, Joe, but we have only a half hour to go, All right. and we have got to get on to the next guy. But Later. Uh, check out that website, and it'll clear up some of your ideas for you. Bye bye. Okay. Science. What science ever done for us? Yeah. TV off. Man. Science is like a blabbermouth who ruins a movie by telling you how it ends. Well, I say there are some things we don't want to know. Important yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, see, see, this guy is, I mean, poor old Joe is exactly symptomatic of, of the, how people's ideas and what they think they know in this culture has been so completely screwed up. Yeah. First off, by poor education. And then by the pervasive influence of religion. Well, I think there's a myth here that truth mm. is easy to understand. Just because something's easy to understand doesn't yeah. make it true. It's beautiful thought that the world would be simple and boil down to little easy bite-sized pieces. Yeah, this made this and Very that. often yeah. it doesn't. The world yeah. is complicated. Yeah. If anything, if something isn't complicated, that yeah. makes me more suspicious of its truthfulness. Okay. Well, well, anyway, and and just, of course, Genesis doesn't do much better because it does have two, uh, yeah, two competing, two competing Genesis creation stories. stories so, so. You know, which, right. You know, which so, and besides, and who created this God? You know, well, so you know, anyway, they just, quick, just, just simply because <laughs> and we will get to our next callers, and uh, just so quickly to tie in on this, because I think this relates. Um, one of our members, Mr. Mark Lowy, he's yes. a PhD in physics, and he is here. Um, Mark is a man who has been lamenting the absolutely abysmal yes. state of math and science education mm -hmm. in the United States. And we have seen a product of that on our show just now. And so... Um, what Mark has done is he has uh, managed to get a bill introduced, um, House Bill 759 in the Texas legislature, and it is being sponsored by State Representative Garnett Coleman. And the idea is, behind this bill, is that the way school, text, school textbooks work right now is that uh, the kids are basically, at the beginning of the school year, given this massive hardcover textbook mm -hmm. that they never want to read, and um, they, are ha they are forced to turn it back in yes. at the end of the year. These books are property of the state. Um, and our students have, uh, over the last few years, um, I think, uh, the recent, what was it? 15th out of 16 nations in math and dead last out of 16 nations in science education. Here we are supposedly the superpower of the earth and we got kids graduating high school and they can't even tie their shoes. You know, I mean, much, and they don't, much less know anything about biology or science or, uh, higher mathematics. So Mark has decided to follow the model of school systems in countries like Singapore and Korea. The highest ranking, first yeah. and second and third. Yeah. Where they are, they're just popping out PhDs left, right, and center. And uh, the way it works is those schools have very low cost, you know, very flimsy, cheap, cheaply printed paperback textbooks that students are allowed to keep at the end of the year. And uh, so Mark has decided, let's get school textbooks like that in the state of Texas. Let's let the kids keep their math and science textbooks 
So they'll have them. They'll have them to reference for their next year in school and the year after that. And and it, it sort of keeps, they get to keep the books. And as a result, uh, hopefully, we don't have such crummy scores. And so he has gotten this bill um, sponsored by uh, Garnet Coleman, who is a Democrat, liberal Democrat from Katy. But uh, this morning, Mark told me that he got a call from a uh, conservative uh, Republican um, legislator out of Dallas, yeah. who is also uh, very favorably disposed yeah. towards this bill. So now it looks as if Mark Mark's bill has uh, bipartisan support, and um, hopefully it will pass with flying colors. I think it's a great thing that Mark has done, and hopefully it should improve uh, you know education in our state so we have fewer Joes. If you already have better educated Joes in the future. Now, be nice, Martin. I know. No, Address I, the issue, not the person. I wasn't attending. <laughs> Joe, I'm sure, is a nice and very sincere man, but he, his mind has been filled with nothing but misinformation. You know, this whole transitional yeah. forms thing is a canard that, you know, creationists keep yeah. bringing up, and it's, it, it is just it basic. Never, it never seems to go away, no matter how yeah. badly it yeah. gets debunked. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if, if God meant for men to fly, why didn't he give us wings? Right. Well, no. Well, we have... We evolved intelligence to invent airplanes and sort of thing. Now he gave us bad back and weak eyes instead. Yeah, so that's all. <laughs> so hopefully um, we will have a little less of that. Now we are just now going to go on to calls, and Steve has been holding on line two. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, first Steve on line two, so we're going to go straight to him. Hello, Steve. Hello, how are Th you doing? Thank you for holding uh, today. How, how can we help you? Thank you. I assume that uh, all three of you uh, do agree that uh, evolution is true, Okay. Okay. For, okay. First off, I want to I want to set a, a general ground rule about things, and then we'll go on to answer your questions. Okay. This is not an evolution show. This is an atheism show. Okay. We're not scientists. Evolution comes up because it seems to uh, at least among among some some members of the religious community, it seems to be a very big deal for them. But uh, you're not talking to a group of biologists here. What we know about evolution is that well, first off, it is both a fact and a theory. Okay. I mean, the fact that evolution happens has been has been confirmed. I mean, we know that life forms evolve. This is very evident in in, in the uh, genetic code. Um, you know, it, the, 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 the genetic underpinnings of evolution are beyond dispute. Now, the various theories of how evolution happens, whether it's through Nat Darwin's theory of natural selection, whether it's through punctual weighted equilibrium, um, whichever process it is that allows evolution to take place, these are ongoing fields of study. So there's still a lot about how evolution works that uh, is yet to be discovered. But the discoveries that are being made are lending support to, to, uh, to the idea that, uh, in fact, life forms do evolve. And the, de uh, the decoding of the human genome, I think, has pretty much settled the issue in terms of whether evolution ever happens at all. And, and so when we want to know about something, whether it's a field of science or whatever, we go to what the experts say. We, we look at what the biologists and the zoologists and the people actually working on these fields have discovered via their research. You know, okay. that's, that's how we approach this. Right. Well, uh, first off, you mixed a little fact with a little theory, because I think what you're referencing in evolution is that you see transformations within the same kind you can call them mutations, you can call them variations, or whatever you want to say. You're going to need to define oh. what a kind is Steve? if you want okay. to get away yeah. with that. A kind would be a dog, a coyote, um, a wolf. Those are the same kind. Uh, you're talking about speciation. In fact, I think we do see uh, speciation occurring. Uh, most recently, I believe, there was a, a, a report mentioned about there were uh, two groups of the same species of it was either flounder or some fish in a freshwater lake up in Michigan. And the two groups were introduced, uh, they, were two, they were introduced in two separate groups into this lake in, a, in the, the interests of sort of repopulating the lake with these fish. The two groups are not breeding with each other. And what this could eventually lead to would be a situation in which um, they could, if this keeps up, develop into sort of two separate... Yeah. I mean, it, well, definition, the traditional definition of a species is a breeding population that's not fertile with another breeding population and why it's not fertile can be genetic or it can be something as odd as a behavior pattern. Mm -hmm. If you come from a culture where they tell you never to marry a woman with green eyes and there happen to be green-eyed women and there happens to be a group of people on the other side of the lake who have a rule that says always marry women with green eyes even though you're genetically compatible, you could develop into two different groups with different gene structures because of a behavioral barrier. And we have evidence for this with songbirds, where the natural variation of their songs has given rise 
to populations that won't breed with each other because of their songs. And the songs are not genetic. The songs are culturally learned. They learn their songs from mm -hmm. other birds. And at the edges of the range where the birds live are two groups of birds that will never breed with each other, even though you could artificially inseminate one bird with the other bird's seed and get something that was a bird that had traits from both kinds. Now, are these two birds different kinds? You know, that's something oh, yeah. that science has to actually reevaluate. Are the they kinds still is birds? Not a scientific term. That's a term used by the creationists. Yeah, it's they right. But are they are they still birds? I would say yes. But mm. now let's go a little further. Is a camel a llama? Do you consider a camel the same kind as a llama? Yeah. Well, the, the, the point is, okay, it's yeah. You know, as I mentioned earlier, this is not an evolution show. Right, so right. usually, if but if you have questions about this specific subject, we would like no, to. Ask, I, well, I want to finish what I was saying. So okay. you've, got, you've got two things you pointed out. One is that you've got variations within the same kinds, and two, uh, you mentioned about evolution, which is a theory. Uh, once been proven, well, let's, let's, well, let let's me finish, stop, let's stop. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. And then once been proven, we know that scientifically there are var variations within the same kind. And the second one is a theory because in that what you're trying to say is that we got instead of a coyote and a dog, that a coyote came from a dog or a variation of a dog, you got a dog coming from a rock. Now, no, that's a big that is, dude, that is so that's wrong. Strong, that's man. No, that is so that. wrong. I never man. say that. What evolution is about. Now, one of the comments. One um, of the comments. Steve, comment, Steve okay. that's not what it's about. One of the comments is that Darwinism, as as well as Hitler embraced Darwinism, all right, goodbye, is sir. an evolution. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, you're you're gonna set up straw no, man arguments I'm, I'm like just that. You're not you, guys. You know, this, you is, know, this is not even worth it. You're going to tell us what we think. If you're going to tell us what we think, then we've got to stop talking. If you're you, telling us what we think, we have to stop talking you. because you can't tell, tell other the, people what they're thinking. Okay. It's just not fair. I right. can't say this, to you you hate babies. It's just yeah. not fair. Bye bye. See, no, this is the kind of rhetoric that you get from these kinds of people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, let's let, let's back up on one yeah. point though, where he he was, no, he, well, you know, he was trolling. You know, I mean, uh, it became very clear yeah. what he was up to after. But a while. Uh, you know, the, the misuse of the word theory yeah. uh, is is one of the big ones. Uh, in common uh, talk, theory is just an idea someone has that may be true or false. Uh, in science, theory is something which has been demonstrated and proven as a rule which uh, can be used to predict and explain things. So when scientists talk about evolution being a theory, they're not talking in the common way that we tend to use the word as it's just an idea somebody came up with that may be good or a bad idea. They're talking about something that has been demonstrated and supported by evidence. Yeah. So uh, at least let's you know upgrade uh, the level of understanding of the language and right. understand what scientists are talking about when they talk about theory. Yeah. Well, the problem is, you know, once again, introducing these straw man arguments yeah. and saying, you know, that this well, this whole yeah, thing was his lead silly. up to sort of like characterize us as like supporting some racist theory or something, yeah. you know, and that's just foolishness. I mean, and besides, you know, back in, in the grand old days of slavery, you know, southern plantation owners used the Bible to justify their slavery. And in fact, there were scriptural grounds for that because the Bible does yes. not say anything against slavery. So you want to talk about Darwinism, whatever you seem to think it is, whatever weird distorted idea it is, being this being this thing that supports a racist theory, when, of course, in the Bible you have St. Paul essentially saying, you know, masters, you should treat your slaves nicely, you know, and you shouldn't really beat them too badly. You know, but uh, he never really comes out and says owning other human beings in bondage is evil. So if you, you know, here's a Bible that supports slavery. You know, so um, I guess what well, you, it's it's unfair to compare. Well, what Steve, to Hitler, Steve needs to uh, the whole Hitler well, we thing. We got to move on. The whole yeah. Hitler thing is a crock. Hitler yeah. also used the Bible to support what he did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there you there know? are several references in Mein Kampf where he says, you know, this is all God's work, eradicating yeah. the Jews. So I mean, but anyway, this this kind of nonsense straw man stuff. So anyway, um, da da da. You want to know why we call this show The Atheist Experience? This is it. This is The Atheist Experience. <laughs> Putting up with these kinds of bizarre prejudicial ideas, these weird kind of distortions and, and misunderstandings. You know, yeah, and but we're, we're not harassed. Yeah, we're not, we're yeah. not, uh, well, I, I, mean, <laughs> I think we are harassed. And I think, I think we are put upon sometimes. And I think that uh, we're declaring a moratorium sometimes. on evolution calls at this point. So let's see what uh, okay. another Steve, we have another Steve on line three and see what he has to say. We promise we'll be nice to you and not hang up on you. <laughs> if you're nice to us. Hello, Steve? Uh, did I do it? Line three. Oh, oh, hello, okay. Major feedback in line three. Okay. Hello. Uh, 
Hello, hi. You on the air? Yes, I'm here. How? Nice yeah, one similarity that I see, like the creationists believe that, you know, that their Messiah had died and then was mm-hmm. risen from the grave. And I see that, I see a correlation between that and uh, the atheist movement's past uh, Messiah who was buried and then they raised her back up out of the grave. Um, and they found, was, you know, <laughs> they found some evolutionary differences with her. Not only could, was she a species that could not multiply, mm-hmm. but that she had definitely some genetic factors of being a primate mm-hmm. and some other type of uh, oh, organism. Are you being rude idea. or witty and rude? Uh, no, I think he's just being stupid. Well, I mean, well, okay. first off, to point out, you know, we are not Metal yeah. Marie O'Hare's organization. We're not American atheists, you know. Um, but, you know, isn't it interesting how somebody who profess, I, I assume that he's a Christian, and this is a religion that is supposed to be all about love your neighbor, and he's gloating over a murder victim. Gee, you know, we could sit here and and make a very uh, prejudicial and bigoted remarks about how Christians like to do that, but, you know, we're above that sort of thing. So, you know. Next. Getting, oh, not, yeah. did, not terribly far there. Yeah, not terribly yeah. far. Above. But anyway, uh, let's, um, before we take any more calls, I want to uh, talk if there's a, one more thing that I would like to bring up, and there is a, uh interesting talk that looks like it's going on in San Antonio. Um, on April 2nd, a mind science lecture by Andrew Newberg, MD, on the relationship between brain function and mystical religious experience. This is, uh, the title of the lecture is See Why God Won't Go Away. Fascinating. Brain, brain science and the, <laughs> brain science and the biology of belief. Um, and this appears to be going on, uh, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. McAllister Auditorium at San Antonio College. There's a fee. We can't mention that. If you'd like to know more information about it, um, you can uh, check our voicemail at 3712911. Uh, we're not sponsoring that, but it seems very interesting. There has been uh, there's been some speculation about that recently. There's a, a very excellent book that came out about a year or so ago uh, by Michael Shermer mm-hmm. uh, called How We Believe, where he discusses he interviews with believers and unbelievers. It talks about uh, ask them why they believe yes. and and the religious beliefs that they hold, uh, why they think other people believe, and yeah. why they think other people don't believe. And uh, all of that sort of thing. So um, this could be interesting. And there was another. There's an article in the uh, issue prior to this one of Skeptical Inquirer magazine where it talks about uh, why bad beliefs don't go away. You know, why people persist in certain uh, religious or mystical or supernatural belief systems despite the presence of disconfirming evidence and the, uh, the role that this might play. And um, interestingly, uh, that, uh, that author... Uh, theorizes that uh, it is sort of an evolutionary um, byproduct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it has to do with kind of a, it's a, it's kind of an emotional defense mechanism. When you, when you think that your environment, you may be threatened <clears throat> by certain things. Uh, speaking of, though, uh, how belief um, can go awry, I just want to uh, read this little news article very quickly. Um, and it's also here for all the people who think that we're just out here to pick on Christians. That's not true. Um, uh, just a news article really quickly from the country of Ghana. It's one of those little African nations. If you look at a map of Africa, mm-hmm. it's one of those little countries on the left where they always seem to like right. be shooting each other and all sorts of strife. Here's one. A man from Ghana was shot dead by a fellow villager while testing a magic spell designed to make him bulletproof. Uh, Ali Obiga Abarima, age 23, and around 15 other men from Lambu Village in northeast Ghana had asked a juju man or witch doctor to make them invincible to bullets. Uh, after smearing his body with a concoction of herbs, Every day for two weeks, Abarima volunteered to be shot. What a guy. I am invincible! Yeah. Invincible! You- Ow! <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. To check his small work, <clears throat> one of the others fetched a rifle and shot Abarima, who died instantly from a single bullet. He won't do that again. Um, anyway, angry, angry Lambu residents seized the Juju man and beat him severely until a village elder rescued him. Yikes. So, um... Now, again, we're not here to, you know, have a laugh at the expense of some poor fellow's life. But uh, <laughs> We just laugh. <laughs> yeah, but we just laugh, yeah. No, but this is, I mean, when you have these these kooky belief systems that really aren't rooted on anything other than I want to feel important. Well, no, when you grow yeah. up, when you grow up being taught just believe, yeah. and you have no leg to stand on and no skepticism, <clears throat> okay. then you're a sitting duck for anything anybody wants to come along and tell you, whether it's magnets healing your horse's arthritis mm. Or herbal remedies for cancer. Okay, well, we're... sitting yeah, duck. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So you... I order you to cease any and all supernatural activity and return forthwith to your place of origin or to the nearest convenient parallel dimension. <laughs> okay, we are on the air with... Uh, Bo- are we? Oh, hang on. Uh, hello, something's happening with... Well, it's not letting me take line one. 
Bob? Hello? Huh. Bob, do you hear me, Bob? Okay. Well, I have a solid light, but nothing going on. I'm going to skip well. I'm going to skip to Jean. Uh, oh, hello. I'm getting feedback through the thing, but I'm not getting any phone calls, and I have two lines that are solid blue, which I should not have. Let me... Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Bob and Jean would call back. Please. Okay, now. If everybody... No, wait a minute, wait. I think... Okay, hello, Bob. Okay, hello, Jean. Uh, what's going on in there, folks? Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to go to Michael on three and see if I can actually get him. Hello, Michael? Hi, this is Michael. Oh, good. Okay, we can barely hear you, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, there I, you uh, go. You're fine. Oh, good. I just wanted to... Um, hold on. Yeah, turn your TV down if yeah, you have it on. Doing that now. Okay, yeah, I get a little feedback. I, I wanted to compliment your show as being an, an, an oasis of intelligence. Um, and uh, I want to let you know that I am a scientist. Uh -huh. I'm a physician. I studied physics and mathematics. Wait a minute, you're a physician? Yes, I'm a physician. Well, if you studied physics, you'd be a physicist. So are you really I'm a not a physicist, but I study physics. Okay, so you're a doc okay. okay, so you're a medical doctor then. I'm a medical doctor. Okay, you're an MD. Okay, yeah. just want to make sure you weren't putting us on. Okay. And we get a lot of that. Now, okay. Well, you've, you've spoken about Darwinism, etc. Uh -huh. There are many, many, many... Um, Theories in physics and mathematics that say that there was no beginning, that I mean, there is an infinity. Yeah, like I was already talking about like steady state theory. I'm talking about infinity. All right, okay. Which means that there was no beginning, which means that perhaps there was no one who started anything. Uh -huh. These these theories have been, um, you know, expounded by many many physicists. Uh -huh. And um, right there, you've got. You, you're speaking about people that don't know enough of science, and that's why they get caught up in um, in, in, in religion. Um, mathematics and physics have already demonstrated that there's time travel, that there is. No, I, I don't. I don't quite know about that. Our, our Mr. Lowy, who is here, who is a uh, who is a, a he's a quantum physicist, is giving the thumbs down to that. No um, time travel yet, Mark. No, no time travel. Yeah, time is an error. Yeah, how am I expected to work like this? I'm a theoretical physicist. I work with yeah. universes, not piddling little stuff like this. <laughs> now, what you're probably talking about is relativism, right? Where you, like, the faster you are going to the speed of light, yeah, uh, yeah, the time yeah. slows. The th but it's not like H.G. Wells' time machine sort of thing. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, so what I'm trying to what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is to bolster your argument that there is an there is infinity. It has been demonstrated. Now, it has been demonstrated in a physical sense, but it's been theorized. Excuse me, I, didn't, I meant to say theorized that, there, that that perhaps there is no beginning, and if there is no beginning, then no one started the beginning, and if there, no one started the beginning, then there is no God. Or even if there was a beginning, it doesn't necessarily follow that some one started the beginning. It could have been some. Thing or just some event. It could have been a thing. It could have been an event. Right. Mathematics have have theorized that events have started things. Uh -huh. That you know, mathematics has been uh, postulated way back to the Big Bang, right. for example. Right. And well, a lot of people don't know that. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're right. Well, and they think that, and, they, and then therefore they think that that something had to start. They believe that time is lineal instead of maybe perhaps steady state, as you say. Uh -huh. And they don't know enough science to know that um, perhaps um, no one thing or no one person started anything. And okay. that's, that's, that's the reason why I, I, I personally do not believe uh -huh. in God. Yeah, right. Yeah, that, that makes, I mean, the, the, the point is that these are fields of ongoing study. And in fact, science as a whole has a whole principle is all about ongoing study, whereas of the creationist point of view is that all of these matters are settled and that there's no room for argument and uh, just accept what we tell you and that's that. And of course that's uh, that's thoroughly not the case. And I think that uh, because so many more discoveries are being made every year and in fact every day, you know, it's it's, it's demonstrable that that's not the case. We appreciate your call. Um, you know, if you'd like to uh, come and, and meet us at the bagel shop or something like that and talk to other unbelievers, you're certainly welcome to come. Okay, thanks. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next caller, and right. thanks very much. Right. Okay, let's uh, try to get to Tammy on the line. Uh, hello, Tammy. Hi there. Hi, you're on the air. H how are you guys doing this Fine. evening? What can we do for you? Well, um, I just wanted to call and um, see what you thought about what I had to say. Um, okay. You said that, uh, you know, that you don't believe in God, but um, maybe you think that God has a set of rules maybe that you don't feel comfortable letting other people tell you how to live. 
But what I believe is I believe that God is just a loving force of nature. And if you say that you don't believe in God, more or less, you're choosing the opposite of God. And that's how other people take it. I mean, maybe you really don't know that you're doing that, but... Well, you know, I, I, I kind of think we all do. But what? How would you describe yourself, ma'am? Are you a Christian? Or are you a deist? Or a... well, no. I mean, uh, you know, I just love. I just love. You know, I just know that. I mean, I've seen a ghost, so I know that there's an afterlife. Okay. And um, and I had miracles happen in my life to make me believe that there's something other. You know, that's going on that's stronger than what we know about. You know, and I felt, you know, when I'm out in nature alone, I felt, you know, a spiritual magical feeling. So I know that there's other things, um, you know, in the universe that have um, power, you know, to help, uh, you know, help all human beings. And it's available to us if we want to use it, you know, and really it's a powerful um, tool that we can use, you know, to benefit us. Sammy, yes? how do you know that this isn't in you? I always thought that my feelings about my universe, about higher powers were something very deep and instinctive and very convenient for my parents. The first people that I worshipped was mom and dad. Mom and dad were always right. When mom and dad were around, I felt just fine. Nothing could go wrong as long as mom and dad were happy. Most of the people who have described to me their feelings about the existence of a deity have described what sounds a lot like something that happens to every infant that there is and there's no confirmation of this outside of what's happening in your mind. Well, okay, right. I understand that. Well, I mean, I understand that, you know, it's debatable about whether there's ever been an actual, you know, confirmation of it. But I do know that, um, let's see, my sons come in the room and start trying to talk. But um, I just know that there is probably a higher being. Well, it's what you feel. You don't know. Well, I mean, okay, know let's, that. okay, like, let's I mean, say, for example, all the time through history lately, you know, someone gets in a horrible car wreck, and then they have a miraculous thing that happens when they pray. I mean, we it didn't happen to Dale Earnhardt. Oh, right, right. And well, Dale, I mean, Ehrner, Dale Earnhardt had a Bible verse taped to his, the dash well, of his car okay, when listen, he I'm sh- listen, I'm sure, you know, there are horrible tragedies that happen, but, you know, I don't say, yeah. when something bad happens, I don't say, God, there must not be a God because something bad happened. Well, I'm well, just, no. Right, but, but, but see, but we're not atheists that, because bad things happen. Okay. No, well, I'm okay. You know, you we're, think that this could be something that's just something that's natural in human beings? Right. Well, can okay, yeah. my father you actually... Do think that's possible? Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, my father actually okay. is a neuropsychologist, okay? And you all had just mentioned about um, some man that was uh, putting on a seminar about how the, your mind, you know, will produce chemicals, you know, that make you feel euphoric and it, it, it you know, causes you to believe in a God so that you will feel happy, you know, to know that you're going to die. Well, we're not quite sure why if that, that's specific, if it's a chemical thing. It's specifically well, there, there, well, there's, there's specific areas of the brain and specific uh, neuropeptides Right. Uh, that create uh, spiritual feelings within us. And, right. uh I guess the question is, is when we can find uh, physical uh, explanations for what we think of as spiritual feelings, why would we think that there's something uh, non-physical about that right. feeling well, we call spiritual? No, right. I mean, I do think that that is definitely physical in your body, and I mm-hmm. think that that's wonderful. That, and I believe, and see, and I believe that God made that to maybe comfort us in a way that maybe we couldn't be comforted, you know, in a horrible tragedy or something that happens where we're getting murdered or in a car accident, you know, to help us escape the pain. I think that, you know, our brain has the ability, you know, to manufacture these feelings. Uh, I think it's not fair to take something nice and good and slap God as the reason that it happens. I could say... Oh, I'm not saying... Actually, I'm not saying because it's God. All I'm saying... You kind of are when you say that God may or did give that to human beings. The fact is, we have these things in us. We have endorphins. Okay, well, listen, but, but what you're doing, though, is you're saying that you, that you don't, you unfortunately don't want to give credit to, you want to say that uh, we, no, are, no, the no, human no, body no, has been developed. I, it's not that I don't give credit, it's that the credit hasn't been earned. But who are you, who are you giving, um, who are you giving reverence to for the miraculous? I um, don't have, well, I don't have a necessity to give that. Right, right. Yeah, see, I mean, I don't a lot of people don't. Do that. Yeah, see, here's, here's, here's the, the criticism that I, that I have, of, and we only have, we're down to our last minute. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and answer your question, but we'll let you go. And if okay. you'd like to call us next week, please do. We'd love to okay. talk to you Thank some you. more. Thank you. I'll hang ha- up and listen. Have Goodbye. a great day. Um, and our Mary, we're not going to be able to get to you today. Sorry, Mary. We'll get to you next week if you call early. Um, this idea that the universe or God or whatever you want to, that there is some sort of celestial parent out there looking after us, I can understand why that is emotionally comforting. 
And I understand that that is the impetus behind a lot of religious or supernaturalist belief is the emotional comfort it provides. But my criticism of it is that it also puts you in a situation where you are essentially abdicating responsibility for yourself. I mean, if the universe or God is this wonderful thing that's up there giving you these great feelings to make you happy, then you don't have to be responsible. You're responsible for nothing. It's all on God. Anyway, we're done for today. Uh, thanks for calling. Uh, See you guys. Turn in. Next, uh, tune in next week, 5 p.m. Christians, we, we don't, don't hate you. We just think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs>